Let me start by saying I trained as a sociologist and we have special classes in how to use jargon to make simple ideas sound much more complex than, than they really are. <clears throat> Unfortunately, you're, you're going to find there is a little bit of jargon in this because what I, what I want to do is tell you about um, a study we're just embarking on, which is actually quite complex. There's a, there's a lot of mix in the, in the, in the problem. And I have to convince you that we've sort of got a handle on what the solution might look like. Okay. So it starts with a, a snappy title, Knowledge Base to Model the Relationship Between Individuals' Lives and Their Communities. And there'll be a test after this on where to put apostrophes. <laughs> okay. So on, on the next slide, where's the slide driver? Um, it's, a, it's a collaborative project between um, what, what in, our, in our world we call industry partners, our, our community and the MAV, and both Betsy and I are from, from Deakin University. It's funded, or I should say underfunded, by the Australian, Australian Research Council, but we have had a long history of uh, doing reasonable research on a shoestring. Now, <clears throat> I'll start by talking about the, the aims on, on the next slide. But to get, give you a sense of the problem, I want to, I want to tell you a little bit about um, the theory we're using to, to address the problem. So, so the theory for us is really sort of, sort of setting, setting the scene. Now, to start with, we, we say that it's very important to think of communities and individuals as being different types of things. Now, that's, that's easy to say, but it's difficult to think because you think of a community as, in one way or another, a collection of, of individuals. So I like to use an, an analogy um, which draws on ecology. I like to use it. No one's ever understood it, but it doesn't stop me from having, having a go. What, what I'd like you to do is to think about the idea of there being different, different species, different species of, let's say, animals. Yeah? So we've got camels and frogs and fish and so on. And there are different environmental niches, yeah? like deserts and ponds and rivers. Yeah? Now, camels are happiest in deserts. Frogs are happier in ponds. Fish are happier in rivers. You see, you get, you get the idea. So we're starting off by saying, well, individuals are, are sort of different species. That's to say they've got... Um, different aspirations, different ways of thinking, different ways of seeing the world, and so on. And communities are a little bit like environmental niches, ecological niches. They're different sources of support, of threat, of hostility, friendship, resources, and so on. So, what's, so the idea underlying our approach to, the, to, to this problem is the, is the idea that, in a sense, whether we know about it or not, there's a, there's a, a potential fit between the type of, type of person, type of individual, and the type, the type of community. Yeah? I told you, it's never, never worked before, so I'm not expecting it to work, to work this time. But I will, come, I will want, to, want to draw on that to explain some of the, the technical things. OK, so we, we, we've got two aims to our research. The first is modelling the, the impact of the community on residents' lives. And so in my, my, analogy, my analogy there, it's what effect to different sorts of, um, different sorts of ecological nieces, different sorts of collections of resources that represents the community, how does that, how does that affect, affect people? We, we think in terms of um, three different ways of describing community. Uh, we, th we think about uh, what we call community of place, that's the geographical communities like neighbourhoods or suburbs or villages or, or towns or what have you. We separate that from communities of interest like voluntary associations or uh, geographically dispersed e uh, ethnic uh, communities or geographically dispersed life lifestyle communities, and so on. And lastly, 
Um, what's sort of a new name for a, a relatively old, old idea? Per, personal communities. And this notion's arisen um, out, of, out of the fact that we are a much more mobile and geographically dispersed uh, society. And so the, the older sort of networks of friends and family and so on are now tend not to be tied to place. We have relatives in different parts of the world or different parts of, parts of um, the country. We have um, friends who we never actually see but talk to on, on the mobile phone all the time and so on. And these, these matter to, in the sense that they're significant to us and we take into account their views in deciding our views about things and so on. Um, next slide. The second, the second aim is about the, the, the fundamental nature of a community is a set, a set of connections, a set, a set of relationships. And so we can think of people as being more socially integrated or more soci socially isolated and so on. What we, 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 just, we assume, but the, to date there's no real evidence of this, we assume that where you, where you get um, uh, dense social connectedness, that you, that you get um, uh, improved, social, uh, improved community functioning. Communities work, work better on the basis of the, the, uh, the existence of close relationships between community members. Okay, so, so they're the two aims. Now, I've got four slides of objectives, which I want to just skip through. So if we go objectives one, two, three, four, that's all. Yeah, they're all boring. <laughs> uh, the, prob the problem with university researchers is that um, research projects sort of start life as a grant application, and you have to put all these things in the form, and after a while, they, they sort of find it, they sort of live in the PowerPoint slides. You know, you can't you can't get rid of them. Okay. So um, there, there's there's what we're, we're trying to do. Bas basically, this this interrelationship between individuals and their communities, taking into account there's a range of different communities, and there's a range of different individuals, and we're looking at uh, what what the effect of matching has or mismatching and so on. So for, from our point of view as university researchers, we have specific outcomes like this. This is, why we, this is why we live in our ivory towers to ponder about things like this. We want to construct a model which to us is a, is a set of equations which given a cert certain amount of data, we could produce more or less correct predictions of, of how happy someone is going to be in this community and so on. Okay. And in particular, it's a, it's a model that, show, from, a, from our point of view, shows, shows how it works. Luckily, though, to keep us engaged with the real world, we have industry partners who, for the, who give us a set of specific outcomes on the, on the next slide, which is a data, uh, a knowledge base that's relevant to, to, to policy that's concerned with community development and capacity building. Okay. And I'm gonna, gonna take you through what, what that means in terms of um, uh, what, a, what a knowledge base is and how we're constructing it. But I'll, I'll just quickly take you through uh, the, the conceptual framework we're using to decide what things ought to be measured. Yeah, this, is, this is about finding indicators, measuring things, counting things, and, and so on. Okay. So on the, the next slide, I, um, I, I start with a conceptual framework, which you, you sh you've got it by now. We think of a community level and an individual level as two different, different types of things. And we talk about, for us, the two important things about um, community are what we, call com what we call community structure, which I'm going to explain in a second, and what we call community capital, which again I'll come back to. 
And then we have two ideas about um, the individual, about what matters for, for our research problem. Um, I'll call those the life situation and the life world. And again, I'll come back to, to explain what those are. Okay. So on the next slide, I'm looking at um, the community level. And I've said there's two different, two different aspects to that, community structure and community, community capital. And I'm looking at community structure. Okay. And in that, there's, there's, again, two things that we think matter. What, what, what causes the structure of a community? The organisational community, that's to say the mix of organisations that, that, um, that are located in or affect a community, the, the organisations that employ, organisations that provide services and, and so on, civic, civic associations and so on. And then a community we would want to describe in terms of um, uh, the, the sort of demographic mix, the, the range of age, gender, et ethnicity combinations that, that in a sense give a, give a community its, its uh, uh, demographic character. Okay. So on the next slide, the second aspect of the community level is community capital in which we're just largely recycling some of the ideas about, about social capital, which I, I um, gather is uh, well known to you. And then within that, uh, we want to add the physical a assets of, a, of a, a community, its industrial and commercial infrastructure, um, and so on. The, its cultural heritage and, and social history, and and later on, I'm going to point out how what we, one thing that we need to be able to, to do is look at how things are, are changing. And then lastly, the natural environment and geographical features to the extent that, they're, um, that they matter to the, to the community. OK, so the next slide just shows you I'm going to shift from the community level to the individual level. Big sign here saying, please do not tap the microphone. Um, so on, on the next slide headed uh, individual level, yeah. remember those, those two notions I wanted to pose, the life situation and the life world. By the life, life situation. Where, the stage in the life cycle, where, where you are, yeah? how old you are, whether, whether you're a parent or not, and so on. Yeah? Social status, the, ro the roles that an individual's involved in, and the access to social networks. The life world we, is more of a sort of cognitive world. Yeah? We, we start by the assumption that um, people don't actually deal directly with the, with the real world, they have ideas about it, and it's on the basis of their ideas that they, that they do things. Yeah? So the motivations, the values, the preferences that we use to interpret what's, what's going on around us. Okay. So we have, we've, I've started by saying, we, what we want to do is relate differences in communities to differences in individuals, and then I've shown the, the, the sort of basic ideas we're using to distinguish, uh, to identify the things we want to measure about um, communities and about individuals. And then on the next slide, what this means in terms of the design for the knowledge base. Yeah. So on the left, we've got an, the notion of um, collecting data, okay? So we, we have done preliminary work with using data that we've um, uh, got from the ABS, and we've taken a, one particular year as the year that, uh, that, we, that we want to benchmark, and that's 1996. Okay. We're also including public domain data. Public, by public domain data, what? What I mean is data we can get for free or, or, or virtually free. There's a, 
a, a more respectable way of describing that. But for, but for us, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of our work is uh, finding data with, without much money. But for, but for example, we use um, we use the malwares. Um, uh, with mal with malwares, we can work at. Um, uh, very small geographical areas, because because if it's in Melways, uh, we know which which street it is. If we know which street it is, we can use um, uh, geographical information system software to locate it within a a, ski, a geographical scheme. So we from Melways we get things about um, where there's schools, where uh, where there's shops, where there's milk bars, where there's doctors, medical clinics, and and so on. Okay, masses and masses of things that tell you tell you about the the, the sort of fixed services of of um, a, a geographical area. Okay, uh, we we collect um, crime data like um, tied to uh, a, a geographical unit, health outcome data, and so on. So um, I could give you a big long list of all the types of data that that we use um, under this general thing of public domain data. Okay. And then lastly, the, the project incorporates a, a, community, a community survey, or a series of community surveys, which are themselves, it uses a sampling system, which um, first selects geographical units and then selects individuals within, within those. Okay. All of this is um, coded to a standard geographical scheme. Yeah imaginatively called the Australian Standard Geographical Classification Scheme. And, uh, and that's stored in a, in a, a complex database. Yeah. Now, we have, so that's all about putting data in, and then we have what we're calling an analysis engine to be able to get information out. And in, information in, the, in this case is aimed at um, being able to uh, uh, match what particular, particular stakeholders need in terms of p particular sorts of information about, about their, com their community. So what we're looking to be able to do is to build a, a sort of uh, what's, what's known technically as a data warehouse, but which has multiple views into it, depending, depending on your interest. Okay. And then lastly, on the last, last slide, with um, there's all sorts of ways in which counting things and measuring things actually gives you a, a distortion. In particular, what what matters here is how how people see their community, their neighbourhood, and so on. For example, for example, the issue of what what is a neighbourhood. One day the ABS will come out with a stunningly clear definition of of what a neighbourhood is with very specific coordinates and so on. That may or may not be the same as the perception of the neighbourhood that the people live there have. Yeah, it may be that um, uh, my neighbourhood is just my street. Your neighbourhood is several blocks. And that they don't fit with uh, uh, geography as, as um, depicted on, on a map. So what we, what we want to do is talk to people and describe their area, their geographical area. And so we're focusing on the meaning of quantitative measures. When people say, yes, I'm very satisfied with blah, what, what does that actually mean? What are the key features in their mind of the neighborhoods, the communities, and so on? And lastly, what, when people talk about community involvement, what, what do they mean by it? What do they see as obstacles to it? And, and why, why do they do it? OK, so this is a three-year project, first year of the project. So if you don't behave yourselves, I'll come back next year. Thanks. Thank you.